everybody, how's it going? Well, we're back for lesson five here, and I'll show you how to sketch and draw a hot dog surfer <laughs> doing the shaka sign. <laughs> or hang loose, too. I guess they use that to say hang loose. So I'm starting to sketch it out here. I'm just getting the kind of the action lines going. His floppy ears blowing in the wind and sort of the line of, of where his tail is going to be. And uh, it's a carry. I, I do this character a lot when I'm doing like pet stores and stuff. Like uh, I used to paint for pets on Broadway and uh, I paint characters like this. But if I'm doing a summer theme for like a pet shop, I would do the hot dog surfer sometimes. And uh, I'm using the Blackwing 6, 602 again, the Palomino uh, Blackwing pencils. And they're pretty cool. And I don't, I don't know if I showed you this. I'm gonna show you. I just got a box of them, but they have these really cool erasers, and uh, you can pull them out. You can pull out the the metal part, and this part, the eraser actually extends. So when the eraser gets lower, you can you can do that, and then it pushes back in here like that. It's pretty cool. It's a great pencils. And here I'm just uh, fleshing it out, drawing it out, and uh, he's got the he's got the little shaka sign going on here. And it's kind of weird because he only has three fingers, so he only has two of them folded down. But it works. It suggests that the main thing is just you know showing the expression and the personality, you know, and uh, and that comes through in how you draw the body too. You don't want to do characters. A lot of times I do characters from the three quarters angle because it just reads really, really well and uh, you can, it kind of defines the character. Now I wanted to say on his ears though I kind of messed up. His ears look like bunny ears <laughs> and uh, they're like too pointed. It's like if I gave this character buck teeth he would look like a little bunny and change his tail. But. And a lot of times I make characters winking too. You know, he's like. <laughs> I put little dots, you know, up here on his, on his jowls to make him more like a dog, so. And as you know, I do different types of eyes. Sometimes I do the big buggy round eyes and then these eyes are more like Hanna-Barbera-esque eyes or even Disney eyes. When you're drawing and sketching, you, the lines that overlap will show something for, more forward. Like see on his head how his neck comes down and it, the lines sort of go into his body. Same with his, um, his right arm. The line goes over it and that might be redundant to some of you because uh, you're already you know better than me at sketching <laughs> a lot of people they'll they'll be really good at one part of what I do like the sketching and they just want to learn the medium of window painting so then they you know this part is just sort of I'm preaching to the choir because you already know how to draw and, uh, but for then some, it's it's new, like the drawing and stuff. Doing this uh, three-dimensional animated type drawing is new, so it'll be educational for you. But uh, yeah, there's just so many types of artists. And again, I talk about sign writers and the stuff they do. It's just like one guy, Paul Bank signs, just crazy. He is a master sign writer. So here I'm backing up. Now on the wave, I kind of messed up, you know, a lot of, sometimes on perspective and stuff, I'm not very good. It's, it's one of the, my weaknesses, one of the areas where I'm not as good. Like, it starts off fine here. Kind of shows he's riding on top of the wave. 
And uh, the reason I did the wave like this is because there's not a lot of room, you know, on the glass to show a long tube tube wave. And I'll, I'll see if I can find a picture of the. I have a Santa Claus that's surfing, and he's in a he's in an actual tube wave where the wave's breaking kind of just past him. But in this case, I just have him on top. And probably most people don't notice the perspective on the wave or anything. They're focusing on the dog and his expression. But when I paint it too, I kind of kind of goofed it up a little, the wave. But you know, you live and learn. So I'm almost done here. I'm wrapping it up. He came out pretty good. I just need, I need to change his ears. <laughs> His ears are like, hey, what's up, Doc? <laughs> I actually, I don't show it here, but I actually, I think I posted on Instagram. I, I did a bunch of characters around it where you could just switch his head. Like, I, well, I did the rabbit first, and then I did a, I did a cat, and I did a, a monkey and a gorilla, and just faces all the way around it. That does it on that. So, on this first part, I did speed it up a little. Um, I think this is twice as fast. But when I start laying in the colors, the local colors, I do, um, I do slow it down. But, uh, so on the wave, I was trying to get the perspective, like, it's going away sort of you know from the camera or from your view you know and I got the lines right like underneath the wave like they're going the right direction but I think when I painted it with the black I went the other direction I'll tell you sometimes my mind I feel dyslexic when I when I do perspective and geometrical shapes and stuff but I'm working on it I draw a lot I practice a lot I need to draw more uh, perspective and things like that. But you know, I just love doing characters. So here I'm just using a two inch foam. I'm laying it in. And look his ears, they look more like dog ears now. <laughs> They're not all pointed like a rabbit. And I'm just sketching it out. I pretty much got the same position. When I do the hands, I do decide to, I think I changed his hand. Like his right hand, instead of having it down, I made the perspective of it like it's coming out like that more. But then on his uh, left hand, I'm doing the shaka sign the same. It's fun to paint on glass because it's so forgiving. It's like no matter what happens, you can just scrape it off. I mean, I could wash this whole thing off if I wanted to. Sometimes I'll do that. I'll have characters. I might be painting a dragon or something and I'll turn it into crocodile or a gorilla or whatever. He's a chubby little dog. <laughs> I'm going in with the razor, cleaning it up. Eventually when I get my house set up or get in a manufactured home, I'll probably, I might do this on the inside with lights and stuff. I might even take this piece of glass and Put it in a, in a, in my uh, shop, like right in, like set it right in. So he's coming out pretty good. He looks pretty much the same as the sketch, except for his uh, his right arm. His hand is like. I decided this time to use my um, phone, so it's kind of jiggling a little because it's on this big extended thing, and it's like the wind's blowing a little. But um, so here I made up a really nice brown. When you mix the two opposite colors, I talked about this before, you know, purple and yellow. You mix them together and then just add more yellow to it to give it uh, more of a golden a golden color like this. This would be the same color of a maybe like a, the crust on a sandwich or, or a hamburger bun. And 
And then I, I, I don't know if I show it, I don't think I show it, but I do two coats of every color usually. But then sometimes I get away with one coat if it's like a teal or a, has a, like blue and white really covers well. And I think this is a, I don't know if this is a one inch foam brush or, oh no, this is a two inch foam brush too. I use one inch foam and two inch, uh, the poly brush brand. I don't know how many times I've said that and for people that have been watching my channel for years, it's very repetitive, but someone might be new to the channel. I got a comment the other day, someone says, I'm new to your channel, so what kind of paint do you use? And you know, they want to know things that a lot of you guys who are veterans of this channel already know and you're out there painting already, making money and <laughs> But what I was gonna say was the um the camera I'm using my camera phone and uh it it has really nice color. I don't think I really did much to you know, I didn't adjust the colors very much on this video. But when I shoot with my camcorder or even the GoPro, because of the lighting, I have to do a lot of, I have to mess with it a lot in, um, you know, the, in the, in the program here. Now I'm laying in yellow. I just bought this yellow at um, Lowe's, because there's a Home Depot in uh, Reno, but, um, but I go to Fernley, which is about 30 miles from from Fallon on the way to Reno. And uh, I just picked up, this time I got a quart of yellow because I went through quite a bit, bunch of yellow. Yellow and white are the two colors you're gonna go through most. Yeah, I was just touching it to see if it's dry. And when I was working full time doing commercial work, as you see in a lot of my videos, I just use rollers for a lot of this, especially like the yellow, because I use so much yellow for different things. I would use the yellow for this, like a four inch roller. But uh, until you get used to using a four inch roller like that, it's good just to use the two inch poly brush or the one inch poly brush. And you can use other brushes too if you want, if you find using just regular flats, flat brushes like the Mac 162. To give it contrast, I I usually do a red surfboard. It's the most kind of the obvious color to use because you've got a brown dog, you've got yellow trunks, and you've got blue water. So you could do a purple surfboard, or you could do even a green. <clears throat> but the red the red is more contrast against the blue and the other colors, so it fits well. That's something I'll probably do a video on at some point where I'm talking about color and the use of color. You know, what what colors to use where to make them pop more. <laughs> but yeah, I'm a lot better at characters than I am doing perspective and 3D things. And but I'm still working on it. I have video classes that I take to learn different things and to me perspective is like one of those things I would like to learn more because it would enhance my artwork for sure but I'm just not really into it. Oh here I was going to show you take the brush and just daub it like that you can make that's how you make like raindrops or splashes of water just poke it like that right on the end of a two inch foam brush a little trick there. Now I'm going in, I'm using the Mac 162, they're flats. I mean that's what I call them because they're flat brushes. And uh, or, or is this a smaller one? Oh this isn't the this isn't a flat, this is more like a, a rigger or a script liner or this is the brush that eludes me that I used to get from U Utrecht, and they don't have them anymore, and this is, I want to find a brush that 
works for me. This one's gonna wear out after a while, but they do last pretty long. I'm just adding some details to make them look like some Hawaiian trunks. <laughs> And I think later on I do outline these with a really thin black line, but you know, it's not totally necessary. Especially if you're doing a bunch of different characters and you don't have all the time in the world like I do to just do whatever. Like before, if I was doing a huge splash, I wouldn't always do certain things. Sometimes I wouldn't even put highlights on characters or even shadows. I would just, you know, but generally I do the highlights and shadows. And now, with these ones especially, I love doing the, the highlights and shadows now because, you know, I don't have the big two inch foam doing it and I'm trying to do it as fast as I can. It's like now I've got this nice little brush and I can, you know, manipulate it and just create some really cool lines. I hope you guys like these videos, these new ones. This is the fifth one in the series. And uh, leave a comment because it's really encouraging to me that people are enjoying it and watching them. I really love getting the comments. This time on this character, I didn't give him a nose. I usually put a little nose on the sun character, but this time I didn't. Sometimes when it's an inanimate character, you don't have to put a nose on it. <laughs> At least that's in my rule book of window painting. Like if you were doing a toaster or a ruler or a, a mattress character with eyeballs, you don't always have to put a nose, but you can, you know. So I did two coats of the, the golden brown here. I guess this could be a, a golden retriever. <laughs> Even though he's not as furry as a golden retriever. So the next thing I'm going to do is, I must be mixing up some brown. I probably turned the camera on too soon, and then I forgot to edit out this big blank space. So let's just talk. How's it going? How's it going in your neck of the woods? <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> this is crazy. I should, I should have edited this out. No wonder this video is so long. <laughs> Okay, here we go, finally. I think I started and I think the brown was too dark, so I went back to mix it and then I get lazy, I don't want to turn the camera off. And then I forget in editing that there's a big blank space, because there's so much involved in these, it take, you know, about 10 hours to make one of these videos with all the shooting and the editing and the painting, and the sketching. But this, yeah, th this is probably where I went and, uh, this is where I changed the color. I said, this is too dark. So I'm, I'm lighten I lightened it up, you can tell. But it's fine because on the nose, I think I painted all black in anyway. But here we go, finally. But yeah, this, this part is fun for me because it's a little bit different than my commercial work because it's almost like I'm doing the black outline. This would be basically how I would do the black outline, but I'm using the brown. I'm just, it gives it an extra oomph when you do the highlights and shadows. But see how I do the line where I come down? You'll see what on the, you see that right here, I come down and you just go past a little and you let it taper off. And that gives a sense of depth. Because his shoulders now are behind his head. The same with the ear too. And I'll pull the line and then I go Sometimes I flip it up to give a little suggestion of fur or whatever. There. I really like this guy's face. He came out good. And you know, really, you don't, you, you don't necessarily, when you do this, you don't necessarily need to um, trap it in black. You could leave it like this, because this is kind of closer to like what uh, the Disney animation is, you know, like when they uh, 
when they used to do stuff like Sleeping Beauty or Lady and the Tramp and stuff, they they didn't. I don't think I don't know about Lady and the Tramp. Yeah, actually, the Lady and the Tramp is more of an old school one, and they would just outline them with a little darker color, the same color as the local color. They would use a little bit darker line, and uh, but then they had changed it with films like. Uh, I think it was the Aristocrats, the Aristocats, and also, um, what's that one where they go to the, oh, in Jungle Book, and then there's another one where they, there's a little girl and they go to uh, the swamps and stuff, and there's an albatross in it or a funny bird, but anyway, those, those ones, like Jungle Book, those are all done, that's when they started using Xerox, like they would do sketches and they would um, Xerox the sketches and they wouldn't do any outlining and then they would um, back paint them, just back paint the cells like they normally do. Here I'm going in with a really light color here. And I had a bit a little bit darker brown but it just didn't read as much and again you gotta remember these colors they will dry darker so you don't want the color just a little bit lighter you have to make it substantially lighter so that when it dries the highlights still stand out but I think this works for the most part that with the camera and the way I'm doing it because you can kind of see what I'm doing but there are some times where I try to get really close and my hands just right in front of the camera like this it's like you can't even you know I'm sitting there like that and you can't even see see what I'm doing so I'm still trying to perfect this uh, this way of shooting it. But you know the other thing that's weird too, the, it's like the camera moves depending on how I move. Sometimes you'll see it move and I don't know how it does that or it's really interesting. And you know it's funny, I, part of me almost says, God it looks better just like that with the brown outline instead of trapping it with the black but but you'll you'll see and you can decide I can hear my grandsons in the background my grandson Keone was here all summer staying with us from Portland and then uh, my son moved to uh, Reno from Iowa, so he's really close. And uh, so my other grandson, one of my other grandsons, Francis, who is 10, he's staying with us. So both, uh, and Keone, he's, um, he's 11, and Francis is 10, so they get along pretty good. They're both into Minecraft and this and that. On his right side, you can see the brown, how thick I made it there, too. And I try to make it thicker, like under like under his arms a little bit, too. And then on his uh, on his chest, or the, on his uh, left side, the line is, is thinner. happened it got I was mixing up the color and I got too much yellow into it so I've got to go back now and I'm redoing it so what do you guys think of the beard <laughs> I look like I look like Santa Claus well I not quite but but anyway I'm gonna uh, I may keep it for a while I may shave it off next week who knows my hair is growing back too, finally. <laughs> that was crazy. I had my son just shave it off when I got here. That really makes it pop. Like it's getting hit by the sun.
those back lines, you know, they're a little bit thicker. And then the bottom lines are thicker. And then, but where I do the, the toes and stuff, I, it's a little bit lighter. Stick to this method. So those back lines, you know, they're a little bit thicker, and then the bottom lines are thicker, and then, but where I do the, the toes and stuff, I, it's a little bit lighter. I'm going to put my glasses on. <laughs> So now here I'm going in with a little, I guess I could call it a butter color or a banana color. <laughs> it's like a really mellow yellow. With a few flip of the brushes, that's done. Okay, here we're taking the um, two inch foam again. And this works a lot better for like longer areas. And since I have it in my hand, I use it down here, too. But, yeah, the, there's nothing faster than the one inch and the two inch foam. And I think I'll probably come back and go over that again. That red is the same color as the surfboard, and then I added a little bit of a dark blue and a little bit of black, but not much though, it doesn't take much. But then it created a it creates a shadow color. Here's one of the in, uh, circumstances, or the, the, um, the times where I'm in front of the camera. <laughs> and then plus it's too short too, I should have moved back more where I could see more of the surfboard. But I think you, get, you guys get the idea. I think now I'm gonna come in with some blue. Or maybe I'm going to highlight it with the pink. The editing on this video is, is definitely lacking. I could have cut out some more areas where it's just dead space. Oh yeah, so now I'm coming in. I just I took the surfboard color and I added white. And then I just highlighted it. Now I'm coming in with the blue. This is the blue right out of the can. This is where I messed up, see? <laughs> the, the lines are going the wrong direction. They're supposed to be going the same as the wave, <laughs> this way. So it's really odd. God, that irritates me. <laughs> I'm supposed to be teaching you how to paint and I'm screwing it up. <laughs> God, it's so annoying. But yeah, it's like a MC Escher painting. It's like an optical illusion. This part's fine, but the lines inside the wave on the other side, like looking inside of it, they need to be going the same direction. <laughs> They're going the opposite way. Oh well. I was just having a lot of trouble with the perspective of the surfboard. Like a lot of times I just do it like a peak, it's like a total side view. And that's what I do, but I guess I was trying to give it some depth or something, so I really screwed that up. <laughs> just like when I did the rattlesnake, you know, and I, I don't know if you saw that video, but the rattlesnake, his body comes down and his tail goes like that, but it's just, I, I messed up the lines and stuff. So when you do a wave, if you do it like this, make sure the lines inside the wave are following the same lines as the lines on top of the wave. Maybe later I'll do something, a video on waves and water. But you know, I do have videos on that. And th these videos are supposed to be more focused on the characters and the expressions. Why do you say? Well, because I want to do it that way. I'm really interested in character design. 
But one of these weeks, and maybe even next week, I might do some alphabets, some lettering, because I know people have been asking about that. This video did end up being a lot longer. See here, when I, I wanted to get a close-up on the trimming. You put your finger right on the corner of the blade to hold it in place and it kind of helps you push it and guide it. Because you're using both hands and you can really control it. This is probably the best shot of me doing that because I've always wanted to get a close, closer shot of that. Now I'm just going in and doing the black. And uh, the reason, part of the reason why this video is so long is because the character is a little bit more, you know, involved. I've got the sun, I've got the surfboard, the wave, the dog, and uh, there's more elements to it. So this, this video ended up being longer. It's like, it's like 41 minutes long, and I've been doing them in like 30 minutes. So this video is about 11 minutes longer. But here I'm uh, just outlining and doing it all in real time. Everything was in real time, except for the beginning. So here I'm trying to get really close, and I think, yeah, see, my hand's right in front of it. It's like, goofy. <laughs> so here I, need to, I needed to kind of turn the camera a little. But then here you can sort of see, there I actually rested my hand all this is just freehand. I'm not pushing or using a mall stick or anything, as you know, but sometimes when I do details, I will rest my hand against the, the picture. But it's usually just with eyes and stuff, or little tiny details. Like even here, I'm not touching the window. I'm just, my hand's floating in space, just... See, that is so weird. It's like, how does the camera know it turns? The camera turned. I'm kind of messed up here. Because I'm, obviously it's out of, you can't see what I'm doing. But every time I make one of these videos, I learn a little and I'll get better at it. The lines I pull on the top, again, are thinner, and the ones below are sometimes a little bit thicker. Like this one should probably be a little thicker, but I'll probably even beef these up. I'll go back and once I do the whole, that whole section of his the fur and stuff. See there, I beefed up the, the bottom line a little. It just makes it look better. that line a little bit bigger too. You can see the difference. And there I do it again. I beef up those bottom lines. And sometimes I do it in one stroke, like on the, the left side of his face, like right by his mouth. That one line was just a single stroke. Like that's, those were single strokes. But if you don't get it the first time, you can go back in and just add it. If you like that look, that, that thick and thin look, which I do. The only thing that's weird about doing it like this is that thing that the camera's on is like swings around and stuff, but again, you kind of get the idea. See, there was a, that's a really good one. I pulled that line and it was really like just clean. I went back because I just wanted to have that one piece flip up. my editing next time. <laughs> Probably if I edited all these spots. Oh, there's the highlight. Boink. And sometimes I use my finger, but this time I used a little brush and it was perfect. I'm glad you could see it. That's at least in the camera view. But yeah, there's a lot of kind of messed up blank space on this one too. Here I'm I don't always clean them up like this when I was doing commercial work. Again, because it's all about speed. But now, 
like I said, I have the time to do it. These are for fun lines to pull. It's just like little C's or a backward C. I've been uh, sketching a lot lately. Lately, if you're on Instagram, you probably noticed, but I love sketching. Oh. And I'm still working on my ebook. I'm. I should have it done this week. My uh, back to school one. And it's a little bit late because my grandson's going back to school on Monday in Reno. You know, and it's like still August. Not even the end of August. So here I am, just trimming again. It's fun to be able to have the time to to do stuff like this to show you. It's like a lot of times when I'm painting windows before commercially full time, it's like rush, 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 you know. And, but even then I did a lot of pretty good videos. I have like, God, a thousand videos. So this one is not too bad. My hand's in front of some of the lines I pull, you can't see, but then some of them aren't. Like here, it's kind of blocked. That one's blocked for sure. <laughs> but if you want to get good at that or get good at anything, you just do it a lot. If you like the style I do. Some people paint in different styles. But you know, I kind of do like it just brown too, the brown outline. But you know, for driving by really fast in a car for a window splash, it's better to trap it in black. Especially in this case. You know, because the orange is so light. But yeah, it is fun to be able to slow down a little and take my time. And here I do go in with a just really thin and loop it around. I'm pretty good at doing that shape, that C shape. getting close <laughs> the other day the neighbor was in, in her backyard and she came up and was like what are you doing and I was telling her she thought it was really cool so I'm on the side of the house and Usually there was nothing over there. Now I got ladders and my tools and got all my paint set up. And every week I'm painting something. <laughs> it's the fifth week or fifth lesson. Yeah, I guess when you're doing trapping it in black is just like sometimes you just visualize the motion you visualize what you're doing and then you follow through I don't always do that but if I'm doing a larger like a longer complicated line I will go through and make like a motion where like you'll see me do that sometimes but I've done this so many times that a lot of times I don't have to do that but that helps if you're practicing and just starting you can kind of like get the feel of where you're going to put the brush. And in a lot of cases, my hand doesn't move like around too much unless it's something small or I'm doing a special kind of thing. But if 
I'm pulling a line, it's just my hands stay still a lot, you know, it's just... Now here I go to the a bigger... I'm using a larger brush, a flat. These ones, I'm pretty much locked. My hand is locked in place because you don't want it jiggling all over. And my body is moving and my arm is moving a little. But it's like my whole body becomes one, like becomes part of it. And then I kind of messed up where his left foot is. So I'm going back in and I'm making the line thicker. And I guess the wave doesn't look too bad. You don't really notice the wave. Because I don't outline water and sometimes, or smoke. I mean, sometimes I do. But like water and smoke and things that are more fluid and organic, I don't always outline them. Just like in cartoons, a lot of times the backgrounds, they're not outlined or certain things like clouds and whatever. If you watch cartoons, it's usually the characters that are outlined. And this, I think is, I think this is like a Mac 162, maybe a half inch brush. I care my whole body to see it moving at the same time. I arm is moving a little too. I think that's it. <laughs> hey, thanks for hanging out and watching this and uh, I will see you next time. Oh, here he is. Pretty cool. Hot dog surfer. Good job. <laughs>